Welcome to Startup Africa, the lively show broadcasted to you every Thursday on the Tuna Shaky YouTube channel. I'm your host, Pamela Nga, and on this show, we bring to you startup innovations that are shaking the African continent, followed by an exclusive entrepreneur interview you don't want to miss out. So let's get the show started with startup updates. Our first innovation is a Nigerian company called Move. Move is an African mobility company with a fine tech play. Their mission is to change the Nigerian car industry by raising up to 23 million US dollars in order to scale rapidly into the continent. The founders Landy Delano and Jid Odunsi realized that people were not able to own cars in Africa due to the lack of finances. Move says it's democratizing vehicle ownership by employing a revenue based on vehicle financing model. Although they make a very small part of the African mobility entrepreneurs, their future is definitely bright. Now let's move into a West African startup based in Togo called Gozem. The startup initially made its surface at the end of 2018 and it's on its way to becoming a regional all-inclusive super app. Initially a motorbike hailing service, Gozem has added car taxis, Roksha hailing, expanded it to Benin, launched an e-commerce and now has acquired Togo's leading food delivery app called Deliverum. The app is greatly expanding and it's on its way to becoming a West African super app. We're ending our startup updates with a Ugandan e-wallet startup. Eversent. Eversent has been gaining momentum over the years with its multi-currency e-wallet, but in 2020, it hit headlines with a notable ground founding of the year. It was able to raise 1 million US dollars in investment and has no intentions of slowing down as it seeks to expand the East African region and hopefully gain more investors in the years of 2022. That's it for the first segment of our show. Please don't forget to check out the Mindful Entrepreneur podcast, which is a Pan-African talk show with entrepreneur stories from all over the world. Until then, stay tuned for the second segment of our show with an entrepreneur you don't want to miss out. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the second part of Startup Africa. Like I said in the first segment, we do have a special guest. His name is Sherry Shoff. He is the founder of We Pick Stories. Hi, Sherry. Hi, uh, Pamela. Thanks for having me. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> It's a great day today. It's a great day. You're calling us from the U.S. early morning. Which state are you in right now? Oh, so I'm in Maryland. Um, so that's on the East Coast uh, near Washington, D.C. Right. That's really cool. So we're just going to get straight into what Whip Hick Stories is. So Whip Hick, first of all, I want to ask, are you a fan of Wattpad? I feel like it's like <laughs> Wattpad, but like, you know, better... <laughs> well, I'm super stoked that you said that, right? Better than what Pat. That's that's a big achievement. <laughs> but yeah, no, I have definitely read a couple of stories on Wattpad uh, in the past, and so I think it's a pretty interesting platform. Uh, they yeah. definitely have a lot of reach for sure. Right. So, how does what's the link with Pick and your passion for reading books and all of that? Okay, so I'll say my passion is actually more for storytelling. Right, so whether okay. it's books, movies, manga, anime, t Netflix mm -hmm. TV series, or things like that, right? I enjoy a good story, right? I always want mm -hmm. to know what happens in the end. And so you can find me, unfortunately, sometimes binge watching or binge reading something. And so it has yeah. always sort of been something I've liked for a long time. And mm -hmm. But then the challenge now is that as I get busier with work, with life, and just everything in general, it's really hard to find that time to get a book to read or, or even to binge watch a show. And so that was that was kind of where that initial desire came for weeping that, well, I wish I can enjoy a good story in a short amount of time. And from that, like the gears just began to the turn in my head that okay, why don't we why don't we give writers the ability to write great stories in a, in a fun and engaging format in a short amount of time. And so that was where the idea for WePick was born. Mm -hmm. So WePick is a, is a, a storytelling platform app, exactly, specifically. Yeah. Tell us so a little bit Weepik more about a, that. Certainly. So WePick is a storytelling app where uh, essentially a writer can get an idea in the morning, work with other writers during the day and publish a highly mm -hmm quality story to you by the end of the day and so it's a way for me as a reader then once I get that short story from a writer I come on the app and I read that short story in about seven minutes or less 
and it's it's really captivating it's really engaging um those stories are delivered in a way that it's not your traditional story reading platform where you read stories in paragraph by paragraph it's almost like you're peering into the conversations of someone and you're you know eavesdropping to see what are these two people talking about i i, I really want to know and so the stories on we pick are delivered in that format they're exciting they are interactive and the big thing about it is they draw you in in such a way that you feel like you're the person in the story. So that, in a nutshell, that's what we pick is. Right. And how does that link to the African market? Because Africans have their own stories. We have folk tales that we used to, though it's not written down, but, you know, grandparents in our tradition, there's folk tales. So how do you, how does it fit in the African uh, Wonderful. community? So I'm glad that you asked, right? So right, right now for WePeak, all the writers are within the African continent. And the readers right. that I'm primarily targeting to start are readers that are either African but uh, and living in the African continent or African mm -hmm. and outside the African continent. And then in the future, I'll target readers that are lovers of Africa. So uh, how does that relate to the African continent? Right now, right, the stories on with the key way to open the app you'll find stories that really take like situations that people face daily situations that people face but then it presents those stories in really engaging ways where like you for example i'm walking down the street and then i get a uh, I don't know, maybe somebody says, hey, and all of a sudden it turns into this blossoming romance story that all of a sudden you're mm. like, wow, is this really how people fall in love? Or maybe yeah. another situation is that, you know, um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of one story, like, you know, like a person is suspecting her friend or, or, or her husband of doing one thing, but all of a sudden it's really that he's doing something else, he's planning like a, you know, oh, a birthday party for her, but then so it takes the African context but then brings it to life in a very different way and of course mm -hmm. our vision is that not only are the stories like about everyday like things that happen and that are relatable to the average uh, African right and it's not only are they written by Africans but it's also that we want to take the stories and easily convert them into audio stories and so maybe you're driving to work or you're going somewhere, you can do, or maybe you're cooking dinner. You can just uh, put it on, uh, play it loud, and then you're hearing voice acted audios by different African uh, voice artists in a way that the story really comes to life and really engages you. And lastly, our vision is that once we can get the storytelling format right, then we want to now go back to African folk tales and really bring them to life, right? It's good mm -hmm. to hear about, say, as you mean you're from Nigeria, it's good to hear about the story of Morimi or Shango, or if you're from uh, South Africa, to hear about Shaka Zulu and to read a story. But what if you see mm -hmm. that story truly come to life with a voice acted, uh, with a voice artist, right, where one person is playing as Shaka Zulu and another person is maybe uh, a person trying to attack him. And then you hear all that and you're like, wow, I'm really transported into what life would have been at that time. That's sort of the vision right. we have for Olympic, to bring African stories to life. I'm excited. That's given me. I'm a huge, um, I love reading. So I love books. I love African history books specifically. So writers that like Chidimanda and I, I don't know how to pronounce all their names, but I've read some <laughs> really good writers, Nigerian are writers and their books. Right. And um, one thing I do want to ask is, is there going to be a possibility to maybe go down deeper into the history of Africa, possibly beyond what they usually teach us in school? Because a lot of the, the African story is kind of half, half told or just, you know, <laughs> just a, a little bit of it is out there. So would there be an opportunity to actually tell factual stories, not just um, fiction, but actual stories that happen on your platform. Yeah. Right, so indeed, yeah, that's part of our goal, right? Um, even though we're starting with fiction, right? Because, you know, you have to start with something that, that, yeah. that you have to start somewhere. But even though we're starting with fiction, the way we're looking to grow this over time is not just fiction, but we also want to then, to your point, go to factual stories where then I get to see uh, actually, what happened? Like a reimagined, 
uh, let's say, say how the Ethiopians fought back against colonization, right? What could that yeah. experience have been like? What were the details? What truly went down? But then rather than yeah. presenting it to you as a history story, right? We're yeah. presenting it to you almost like a show written in a book, right? That's, and mm. I mean, not even a book, almost like a show that comes alive in an interactive format. So that's the way we're looking to present it. And so, yes, we're going to definitely expand our categories of content another category that we definitely want to expand to is to see how do we make the news come more alive so that you're not just reading news and uh i don't know three four hundred word pay article of news but you're reading it and you're getting the the gist of the news this is what's happening this is what it meant in a short amount of time as possible so right. with content, the beauty of content is it can be transformed into so many different formats. The way you speak about it actually just gives me this. I can't wait to see how all of these things develop because I just, it's too much. I love anything that is African history. So I'll be listening with all my eyes, ears, everything. Nice. <laughs> so your platform, do you, are you the, are you the only writer? How many people working on the platform? Does it, does it give an opportunity for other African writers to be on? How does that work? Sure. So right now I'm working with about 10 writers, uh, Af 10 African mm. writers. And right now it's, it's, it's still a closed writing platform where you can just go on and sign up uh, and then start writing. However, we are planning to introduce a new feature by the end, by the beginning of September, where as a writer, you can go directly into the app and write in the app. And the way we're going to launch that feature is with a writing challenge. And so, I mean, mm. we definitely want to support and encourage all writers. And at the beginning, mm. we're starting with a writing challenge to find the best writers that really, right. you know, that really know how to tell stories and capture your emotions and really bring them to life. So that's how we're going to start. And then once we do that, then of course, for everybody that submits to the challenge, which is something that people don't get today, for everybody that submits to the challenge, we're going to bring provide feedback, even if their story does not make the cut, so that they know how they can improve and get better and ultimately win the next challenge and be able to mm -hmm. write on it. And so that is coming very soon. All right, we're so excited to see those new features. So for anyone that is listening, um, it's for the storytelling lovers, it's for those who want to know more, it's for those who are writers, it's for, for, for anybody that is passionate about fictional life, coming through, through an app, <laughs> pretty much. Indeed. And then yeah. there is one more group of people that this is for. Yeah. So mm. one, and this completely surprised me, but it, it turned out that a lot of busy people who typically will never read a book or even think of reading a book, right? Because they're just too busy yeah. in their life. A lot of them actually, it turns out they love this platform because they're very busy. They're very, they don't have time for six, 600, uh, 200 page book or six, to devote six hours to reading. But then with the stories in like seven minutes or less, after a busy day, mm. they typically just open the app and read a short story, laugh, cry, get angry, get upset, whatever the emotion that the writer is going for. They experience that emotion in intense, and then when they're done, they're like, wow, this is great. And so we found out that busy people actually do like this as a way to pass time. Maybe they're at the end of the day or they're cooking or just other things. That's one thing that surprised us. But then we're really glad because then it's showing us that we're not just speaking to the core audience that loves to read, but now we're speaking to an mm -hmm. audience that will like other forms of entertainment. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's pretty amazing because we're expanding the reading pool. That is great. Um, for those listening, where can, is this available on all platforms? How do you download the app? Is it free? Sure. So the app is available on the Apple App Store and the Google Android uh, Play, the Google Play Store. So you can go there and type WIPIC, W H I P I K. You can also go to the WIPIC website, WIPIC.com. And from there, you'll be able to see uh, like example stories. You'll also be able to see the link to download the app. So it's also completely free right now. There's no, there's no subscription. And interesting enough, there, there, the experience is, we're, I'll say the experience is amazing on the app. So if you can, you should download the app, because then you, you will love it. 
All right. Thank you. We're going to end up this interview. Thank you so much, Sherry, for taking your time in, for giving us all the details. Anybody that's watching, any book lover, any entertainment lover, don't forget to go and download the Whip Pick Stories app on Apple and Google Store. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you so much, Pamela. Thanks for watching. You can support our series by becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon member and also checking out tunacheki.tv for all the latest news and merchandise. I'm your host, Pamela Nga. See you next time, same place, same time. And remember, Africa's watching.